so what are like uh, your thoughts uh, so do you, like considering that this kind of a session is being offered every week so what are your uh, like expectations from such a session like uh, what do you think uh, can be what do you think you will be more helpful for you to you know what to make this course better like engaging and more interesting anything like that so can you tell something like that So Shiv Kumar, are you there? I'm here, sir. Yeah. So I was asking, like, considering that this um, session is being uh, offered every week, uh, what what do you think uh, can be covered as a part of this session that will be more helpful for? you for this course uh, so so my plan is to uh, use this session to solve some problems uh, typical problems which you will find in assignments or, or exams so that will be helpful for you from that assignment no, and exam point no. of view okay sir that will be very helpful for us sir. okay but seeing the strength is less what about this is the first class sir Let yeah, me see so this, what I others will be thinking also. Sorry, what others will be thinking? We can see it later on. Yeah, yeah, right. Hmm. So this session will be recorded and it will be available. So the live session, anyway, you can always attend that. But uh, you can also later on go through the recording of this session, uh, live session later on, and. Uh, I will also share whatever slides that I have made. So, yeah, hopefully that will be helpful for you. so i think i will just start uh, with the session so in the meanwhile uh, whoever joins uh, so i can maybe later on repeat uh, so already we have waited for 15 minutes so i will just get started so uh, so i will just give you a brief introduction about myself so my name is parth joshi uh, i am a phd student at the department of mechanical engineering at iit bombay and uh, so i i have been selected for the prime minister's research fellowship and as a part of this fellowship i am expected to uh, teach at uh, a college outside uh, and so we were given this opportunity to conduct live sessions for some of the nptel courses so accordingly i have been selected to conduct live sessions for this course on introduction to mechanical vibration so uh, prior to uh, doing my phd i was working in industry uh, for about 2 and 1/2 years uh, and before that i like i did my mtech 
uh, in the department of mechanical engineering at iit bombay and then after that i worked for indus in industry uh, for about two and a half years and then i joined the phd program this is a brief introduction about myself so so i'll be basically in these live sessions i will be uh, conducting them every week and uh, so the intention of this session uh, as i told you uh, is basically to encourage more interaction and make this course more uh, engaging and more interesting uh, so so i am planning basically to uh, conduct this session every week and uh, to conduct these tutorial sessions which will comprise of uh, basically solving problems uh, some example problems which are similar to whatever you will find in the assignment uh, which have to be submitted every week and uh, i will also try to answer some of the queries that you may have uh, related to lectures or any of the assignments or whatever tutorial sessions that are being conducted so hopefully this live sessions will be uh, interesting and useful so in the first week of the course uh, so you might have already uh, gone through the lecture videos uh, so the first week of the lectures covers uh, like the topics that have been listed over here basically it starts with the fundamentals of vibrations uh, where we find in what uh, what all cases we find uh, vibrations uh, occurring in nature as well as in engineering context like and uh, also there are uh, like the topics related to harmonic vibration how uh, two harmonic motions are combined and also the phenomenon of beats so when we have uh, two harmonic motions which have very similar frequencies uh, close to each other then we encounter beats uh, we also have uh, fourier series and harmonic analysis that has been covered so how to express a periodic any periodic function as a fourier series so that uh, is one useful topic uh, and also there is a lecture on the general procedure for any vibration analysis which basically consists of uh, uh, basically extracting a model mathematical model basically uh, which captures all the mass stiffness and damping characteristics in a system and then try to uh, derive the governing differential equation and uh, then try to solve the governing differential equation uh, so as to uh, get the response of a system to different kinds of uh, inputs and some uh, and professor anil kumar had also solved some numerical problems in one of the lectures so uh in so i have uh, made a list of some of the books which i found useful in whenever i when i studied vibrations so i have made a list of few books so you can actually uh, if you want you can use some of these books you can refer to them uh, so one is basically mechanical vibrations by s s rao which uh, comprehensive collection like it includes a lot of topics and the theory is explained very well and also uh, uh, there are lot of problems and solved uh, examples so which you can uh, i think do that will be very useful the second one is basically mechanical vibrations by jp den hartog so it's a classic book uh, on vibrations uh, which is also like one of the best books on vibrations then uh, there is a, another book on theory of vibrations with applications so this has some focus on applications of uh, wherever uh, vibrations are used so if you like there are some topics related to sensors accelerometers and all those and uh, gyroscopes all these things wherever vibrations are involved and another book on vibrations and waves so this is an introductory 
textbook on physics by ap french uh, mit introductory uh, physics series this is one of the very good books like just to get uh, you know the basics of vibrations like uh, it's an interesting book and the the way things have been explained is uh, like very nice so you can refer to some of these books uh, so shiv kumar so i hope you are there uh, there still haven't been any other participants like who have joined this but i think i will continue with the session as planned so you have anything to say shiv kumar no sir okay yeah so saurabh has joined i think saurabh choudhary yeah hi welcome saurabh uh, so my name is parth joshi actually i am i just gave a brief introduction about myself uh, so i am uh, basically a phd student at iit bombay and i am conducting i will be conducting these live sessions every week for you and uh, so as a part of that uh, this uh, nptel initiative so we have uh, like planned these live sessions so that uh, we will find this course more interesting and engaging so i am basically planning to uh, solve some assignment problems uh, for you which will be helpful for you for the course and I'll, i'll also try to answer some queries so if you have any queries related to any of the lecture videos or anything you can uh, you can ask them right now or later on you can also use the discussion forum of this course so uh, yeah so i think we can just start with the uh, assignment problems Yeah, hold on. I am just uh, sharing my screen. so we can uh, just start with the assignment problems so so we'll start with some simple questions uh, related to basic concepts so so the first question is so what is a harmonic motion so so can any one of you answer uh, this question what do you think out of the given options which one is 
the correct one any answers so um, i i encourage all of you, like uh, you to participate in this uh, live session yeah so saurabh is saying b yeah so you are right so harmonic motion is basically what a periodic motion so so uh, it consists of multiple components of uh, like it can be expressed as a sum of some sinusoidal uh, frequencies so which is basically a periodic function so the correct answer is b uh, periodic motion So the next question is the displacement of a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion it follows this equation which is given over here and uh, if where y is the displacement in centimeters and t is the time. So the question is what is the maximum acceleration of the uh, particle? So now to answer this question, uh, so we will basically just go through like. Now consider if we have some simple harmonic motion, so it can be expressed in this form like a in so here a is basically the amplitude of the oscillations and omega is the natural frequency of the simple harmonic motion and phi is basically the phase difference so here if we compare this equation which is given over here the amplitude a is phi and here omega is phi by e right and phi is phi by 4 so in simple harmonic motion uh, let us say this represents the uh, oscillation of a simple spring mass system and uh, let us say this is the mean position of the oscillation and uh, so the maximum acceleration uh, in the simple harmonic motion it is given by uh, acceleration e max is so anyone knows what is the expression for uh, the maximum acceleration so in simple harmonic motion the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement so any any answers on that if anyone knows what is the uh, expression for the maximum acceleration Guesses. So the maximum acceleration is given by minus a into omega square. So where so it's basically proportional to the amplitude of the oscillations and the square of the frequency. So here, so the maximum acceleration will be minus. Uh, so, so as a, if you want to just calculate the magnitude, so it's like uh, 
R into pi by 3 whole square. So can someone calculate uh, what is the value of this? So basically pi square by 18. can calculate this value and tell me uh, so you can just post on the chat what is the value of uh, this expression So please calculate uh, the value of this expression pi square by 18. Right, so Saurabh you are right. So it's about 0.55. Right, so so any any doubts related to this question before we move on okay so yeah so the next question is so basically there are two springs having some stiffness 18 and 19 newton per ml so they are attached in series and there is a mass suspended at the end of it so the equivalent stiffness of the two springs is what so that is the uh, question that is asked so so first we will just try to draw a figure of what exactly the setup is so it says that there are two springs and there is let us say some mass m so then let us say there is some spring of stiffness k1 and k2 so now uh, how will we calculate the equivalent stiffness so, so for that we have to draw the free body diagram of this mass so, so we will basically represent what are the forces acting on this. So, vertically let us say there is a spring force Fs acting on here on this mass and its weight, some weight W. And uh, so, so if we also draw the free body diagrams of the springs, so let us say so this will also transmit the same spring force so both springs k1 as well as k2 will transmit the same spring force so let us say the deflections of each spring let us say it is delta 1 and delta 2 and let us say if we replace them with some equivalent uh, spring so then let us say the deflection will be delta equivalent so that will also transmit the same spring force so for a spring uh, we have the expression that fs is equal to some k into delta basically the spring stiffness into deflection that is basically the spring force transmitted so uh, so the deflection of the equivalent uh, spring will be same as 
delta 1 plus delta 2 right so which is so from this we, we can basically calculate so this will be fs divided by k1 plus fs divided by k2 so uh, so this delta equivalent is also given by because it transmits the same force so it is fs divided by k equivalent so now we have this expression for k equivalent so the fs force will get cancelled so we will get the expression for k equivalent so 1 by k equivalent is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 so now k1 was 18 and k2 was 12 so now uh, so can you calculate and share what is the answer to this so what is k equivalent so it's basically k1 k2 seven. yeah 7.2 newton per meter okay uh, what about the others are you getting the same answer So right, you are right. So seven point two is the right answer. So any any questions till now? So we will move on to the next question so here we have the equation xt is of this form a sin omega t plus pi so we can represent the harmonic motion in of this form so here if we compare we will get that the amplitude is 12 omega is 25 and the phase difference is minus pi by 4 now the question is what is the time period for this motion can someone tell me what is the uh, expression for uh, time period in terms of the uh, frequency, angular frequency omega? Is it gate level question? So I think Yash is asking is it a gate level question? So yeah you can say it's a gate level question or i think so this is these are some initial some basic questions which i am just uh, considering 
so as to get started we can get, go into more detailed and more difficult questions later on so what so yes what was your concern exactly can you just uh, speak out uh yes yes sir yeah you had asked you were asking like is it a gate level question or something like that so what what was the concern yes sir yeah what was the uh, what was the concern like exactly so what what were like you were expecting like something more difficult or something less difficult or what exactly like what can you tell me more what exactly was the question Yes, can you uh, hear me? Yes, sir. I just sir asking sir. We we can uh, try sir these type of questions for get examination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You can yeah. yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Uh, so the expression for the time period is two pi upon omega. So uh, that will be two pi upon twenty-five. the answer will be about 0.2513 so likewise you can uh, using this expression for this simple harmonic motion you can actually try to calculate various parameters like time period frequency so the frequency in terms of in hertz will be omega by 2 pi which is inverse of the time period similarly uh, Like we know already know the phase phase difference over there, so you can uh, calculate various quantities like this. So moving on to our uh, next question. Yeah. So let us say if we have some Fourier series. For a function f x f of x, so which is given uh, over here, the expression is given over here. And let us say this function f of x is either odd an odd function or an even function. So odd function meaning so so if f of minus x is equal to f of x. Then it is an even function, and if f of x is minus of f of x, so then that's called an odd function, right? So now, uh, and for being able to write f of x as a Fourier series, so can someone tell me what is the nature so what what is the nature of f of x that is required so what is the property that is very important that is required for being able to write a fourier series for f of x what should be the nature of the function any idea
uh, yeah so you have so so saurabh has given the answer as even odd so an is zero for a even function and uh, bn is zero for an odd function is is what you are trying to say right so we will check whether that is the case so for being able to write f of x as a fourier series function the function f of x should be periodic okay and another uh, important characteristic yeah i think my screen share went off yeah so now uh, so how do we calculate the values of an and bn so for that we basically use the orthogonality of the cos cos and sin functions basically so the orthogonality function says that so if let us say if we integrate cos n pi x by l the cos m by x by l dx so this integral will be zero if m is not equal to n and it will be non zero and it will not it will be not equal to zero when m is equal to n so we and similarly we can write the same condition for like if we multiply two sin functions so using that so if we multiply uh yeah so So if we basically multiply this function integral f of x into some cos n pi x by l dx. and integrate it from minus l to l so then so we will be basically uh so using this property so so an in, is multiplied by cos n pi x by l so if we multiply by another cos m pi x by l and then integrate so then using this property of orthogonality we will basically get all the other terms as zero and we will only get the term corresponding to cos n pi x by l so where n is equal to n so then so using that we will get the expression for an and similarly for bn we multiply by sin n pi x by l and then we are get these expressions so now if f of x is an even function so then cos n pi x by l is a even function and sin n by x by l is a odd function so now if if f of x is even uh so if f of x is even then uh 
multiplication of two even functions will be again even so this this total this function considering fx and cos n pi x by l that will also be uh, even and so then we will get an is non zero when f of x is even on the other hand if we uh, consider like when f of x is even so a multiplication of a even function and an odd function so that will be again odd function so then integral from minus l to l so using the property of definite integrals so integral of minus l to l so if uh, for an odd function so that will be actually be zero uh, so here, here minus l is basically corresponding to the period of this function so bn will be actually zero when f of x is even and when f of x is odd then this integral this so this function will become odd now so because f of x it will be an odd function into an even function so then an will be actually zero when f of x is odd and bn so it is it will be here so when this is so then f of x is odd so then it will be an odd function multiplied by an another odd function so which will the resultant will be actually a, another even function so uh, so bn will actually be non zero in this case so when f of x is even bn is actually zero and when f of x is odd an is actually zero so so the correct option will be uh so an is zero for odd function and bn will be zero for a even function so the correct option is b okay So any any questions any doubts related to this any doubts so here yeah, we will move on to the next question now so so it's basically the a body describes two motions given uh, over here x1 and x2 and uh, the question is that what are the maximum and minimum amplitude of the combined motion so, so the combined motion will be basically x1 plus x2 and it also asks like what is the frequency of beats so here so if we consider omega 1 as the angular frequency of x1 and uh, omega 2 for x2 so then omega 1 is 38 and omega 2 is 36 and in terms of frequency in hertz so f1 will be omega 1 by 2 pi so 38 by 2 pi and f2 will be 36 by 2 pi so the frequency of beats is given by the difference in the frequencies uh of uh, so basically it's
f1 minus f2 so it's 38 by 2 pi minus 36 by 2 pi which is 2 by 2 pi or 1 by pi so the frequency is of beats is 1 by pi so now the next question is what are the maximum and minimum amplitudes of the combined motion so now here the amplitudes of let us say a1 is 5 and a2 is 3 so now the when we try to combine x1 and x2 it's not a very simple expression that we will end up with but so the maximum amplitude will be like the amplitude become amplitude of the combined motion will depend basically on the phase difference of the uh, in both the motions so so somewhere both the motions x1 and x2 will be in phase and somewhere it will be in out of phase so so somewhere it will be basically a1 plus a2 and in some places when it is out of phase when it will be out of phase then it will be a1 minus a2 so the maximum possible amplitude will be a1 plus a2 where, where both are in phase so it will be 8 and a1 minus a2 is basically 5 minus 3 which is 2 so yeah so the correct option is basically c uh, the maximum amplitude is 8 minimum amplitude is 2 and the frequency of beats is 1 by pi So any any questions related to this uh, this so I think uh, someone has joined late for them so basically uh, I'll just repeat uh, about the my introduction so my name is Parth Joshi and uh, so I am uh, basically a PhD student at IIT Bombay and uh, and I have basically uh, I am I will be taking live sessions for this course every week and uh, which will be like tutorial sessions will I will try to solve some of the assignment problems and uh, and I'll also try to answer some of the, any of your queries if uh, you have. So, so feel free to ask any questions uh, at any point of time. Uh, so feel free to like you know interrupt. So you can raise your hand or just unmute yourself and ask whatever your question is. So. So we can. Yeah, so we can continue with our questions. So yeah, so we have this question over here. So we have some springs in series and parallel. So we have to find out the equivalent stiffness of the system. So so there are some things like these two uh, these two strings are in parallel these two are also in parallel and and these two are in series so for strings in series the k equivalent for C so let us say if this was the K1 and K2 so then K equivalent is K1 K2 
upon k n plus k two. And for springs in parallel, so it will be k one plus k two. So, so you can try uh, this problem and uh, tell me like in terms of k what will be the equivalent stiffness of the system so i give you maybe uh, two minutes so you can try solving uh, this question So if any one of you have completed, uh, so you can just post your answer in the chat. Ten k by nine. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyone else so this first branch so we can replace it with its uh, equivalent which is 2k and uh, the lower one in series so it will become k by 2 and we have another equivalent spring in series which will be okay so now again these two springs are in parallel so it will be 2k plus k by 2 which will be 5k by 2 so we have 5k by 2 and 2k in series right so then now uh, for using this express expression so we will be getting uh, so like so k equivalent will be so 1 by k equivalent will be 2 by 5k plus 1 by 2 so so it will be 4 So k equivalent will be ten k by nine. So your answer is uh, correct.
so uh, till now uh, anyone has any questions so okay so we will continue with the solution of these problems so so the next problem is so there are three harmonic uh, motions that are given uh, here so x1 x2 and x3 so all of them have the same amplitude and the same angular frequency so uh, so now uh, so we have to find the what is the resultant displacement so so we basically have to find out what is the value of x1 plus x2 plus x3 so now to approach this problem uh, so we can ha like do it like analytically we can just add like a sin omega t so it will be like since the amplitude of all the signs is same so we can just add the signs together omega t plus 4 pi by 3 so the phase difference between the first two is 2 pi by 3 and the phase difference between the second and third is also 2 pi by 3 and between the third and first one is also it is minus 2 pi by 3 or 4 pi by 3 so so we can also uh, like you know add so you can use sine the formula for sine a plus sine b and then uh, so that you can work out that and uh, that will also give us some expression but now there is another way which uh, will be like so without actually doing any calculations we can just visualize how these motions will look like graphically and we can solve this problem like that so any idea how, how uh, we can do that anyone has any idea how we can do that So, uh, so for this we actually have to note that uh, any harmonic motion can be represented as a projection of any circular motion. So if we consider some particle moving in a sir around like a circle with some angular velocity omega then the uh, the x coordinate of this let us say if this is rotating with the angular frequency of omega so then the angle made by this with the horizontal x axis will be omega t so the projection of this point on the x axis is will be a cos 
omega t and here it will be a sin omega t so similarly so basically the projection of this particles motion on to the x and y axis can be represented as a at those will be harmonic motion basically a cos omega t and a sin omega t so we will apply this concept over here now if there is a additional phase difference so now this is let us say particle 1 so now x1 will be basically a sin omega t which is projection of this particles motion on the y axis now similarly we will consider particle 2 and because it has a phase difference of 2 pi by 3 so it will make an angle of 2 pi by 3 plus omega t so the angle between these two is will be 2 pi by 3 or 120 degrees and similarly for the particle 3 it will be at an angle of 4 pi by 3 with respect to this radius so if i just redraw this figure again so so these three particles will always be separated at angles of 120 degrees with respect to each other so that means that they will be symmetrically placed with respect to the origin so what does that mean so so these motions are always symmetrical with respect to the origin so what does that mean like what will be the resultant of this motions now considering that they are very symmetrical with respect to the origin if we project their motion and add them up uh, like project their motion on the y axis or x axis for that matter anything what will be the resultant motion So because of the symmetry, it will actually be zero. So is that okay? So so everyone agrees. So the x and y components of the motion both will add will add up to zero because these three vectors you can say call them like as vectors and so the resultant of these vectors will be always zero because they are passing through the same point so they are uh, always passing through the same point like they are passing through the origin so and they are of equal magnitude and symmetrical so the resultant will be zero so we move on to the next problem so the next problem says that there is a cantilever beam Uh, which is made up of an alloy uh, with Young's modulus of elasticity, which is given over here. Let us call it as E. So we let us construct a cantilever beam. So let us say it as a Young's modulus of E, and uh, this is given that it is loaded transversely at its free end. So this is the free end, uh, and let us we we call a force F. Which is uh, added at the tip. 
so the length of the beam is given let us call it as l and it is given that it has an annular cross section with inner and outer diameters we were given so annular means there is it has a hole so let us say it has some diameters d1 d2 and we have to find out the stiffness of this e now uh, to solve this question we need to understand some things from the euler bernoulli beam theory uh, so which so using that uh so for a point load at the tip of a cantilever beam the deflection is given by that so this is uh, from the beam theory now how will we define stiffness stiffness let us say k will be force per unit deflection so that will be 3 ei by l q so here i is the moment of inertia of the cross section so now we have to find out the here so e is already given l is already also given and uh, we also know the dimensions so d1 and d2 are given so now we have to basically ca calculate i for the moment of inertia of the cross section polar moment of inertia j will be for a uh, sorry So the expression for the polar moment of inertia will be pi d raised to 4 by 32, 34. So like let us say if we consider like these are the x, y axis, and let us say this is the z axis, and so now the cross section will be something like this. So basically, this is basically the moment of inertia of this cross section about the z axis. So So now we also need to find out what is the moment of inertia of this cross section, either about the x-axis or y-axis. Now we have the perpendicular axis theorem, which says that I z can be expressed as the sum of I x plus I y. and because of the symmetry of this cross section with respect to the z axis we can say that ix and iy are equal so it's like 2 times ix or iy so iz by 2 will be the value of ix or iy or j we call it as j so 
so basically i x so whatever the i that is required for this problem so that will be pi d raised to power 4 by 64 for so this is for a solid cross section so now because it's a annual annular cross section now because it's an annular cross section we can write that as so j is let us say uh, so if d2 is the outer diameter and d1 let us say is the inner diameter so now i so this is actually j I will be j by 2 or and our expression for stiffness was 3 pi e by L q so we can substitute the expression for i over here and uh, use the values of the Young's modulus so Young's modulus is 72 into 10 to the power 9 Yes, someone has raised their hand. So, Usha Kumari, you have raised your hand. So, yeah, please go ahead. So Usha Kumari you have raised your hand. So what was the question that you have? Yeah and someone has asked like uh, that they have joined late so how can I access the other questions? Yeah. Sorry sir, got this show okay. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, yeah please, uh, what were you saying? Okay, 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 yeah, and uh, Mr. Om Prakash Singh, so you have asked that uh, so you, because you have joined late, how can you access the other questions? Yeah, so uh, this session is being recorded, and uh, I will share uh, the recordings with the NPTEL team, and uh, so you will get access to that, and as well as the other like the slides as well. So, so every week I will be doing these live sessions for you um, and uh, so you can ask any of your queries if you have any questions. Uh, so these live sessions are basically meant to address your questions and if you like you can also tell me like if you have anything uh, what will make uh, so considering that you have live sessions every week what do you want to be covered uh, as a part of these live sessions so uh, so if you have any idea like what exactly you want uh, 
problem so do you want uh, like any any specific thing uh, to be covered as a part of these live sessions so you can give this uh, feedback Yeah, so your question is how can we differentiate between periodic motion and harmonic motion? So, yeah, that's a good question. So, so let me draw a figure. Um, so, let us say, so periodic function basically means that a function that will repeat itself after a fixed period of time so so let us say it, it can be any function like this something it will always keep let us say uh, repeating itself after some time so that is periodic now if we have to consider a harmonic function So harmonic function means a function that can be expressed as sign uh, as a basically uh, either in a function of uh, as a sine or cosine kind of a function. So it has a single frequency content and it can consider consist of series of sine and cosine functions like and basically sine omega t and its harmonics basically a multiples of that frequency so sine omega t plus sine 2 omega t or cos 2 omega t something like that so they are also periodic functions and they can be expressed as the sum of sine and cosine functions now periodic function is in gen is in general it can be any of any nature but it has a unit which will keep on repeating itself after a certain fixed period of time so that is the difference between so it need not be of uh, like we cannot uh, definitely say that this can be expressed as a series of sine and cosine functions now the four the concept of fourier analysis it says that like if we have any periodic function we can use uh, sine and cosine functions to express uh, to approximate the original periodic function so we will use infinitely large number of sine and cosine functions we will add them up and try to approximate the original functions as a series of sine and cosine functions so basically we are building a harmonic function which will closely approximate the original function the original periodic function so does that answer your question So anyone has any other questions? Yeah, we can say that harmonic function it's like, like so periodic function is a bigger class and like harmonic is like a special case of that. So you are right. So any other questions? So if there are no further questions, so we can uh, end today's session. So if you have anything to say, like um, anything, anything specific, like if you have any other queries or like before um, moving on to the next week uh, session. So if you have any feedback to share, uh, like or anything like 
uh, what exactly you want to be uh, covered as a part of this uh, so so we can actually plan accordingly So anyone has any anything to say? So fine, I think we can end uh, this meeting. So thank you. Uh, yeah. So Om Prakash Singh, you have raised your hand. Uh, what was the question? So you can actually unmute yourself and ask. Uh, Mr. Om Prakash. What is the question that you have? Okay. So you are unable to unmute. Uh, okay. So you can you type your question in the chat in that case? question is what we are learning here can we apply it in practical life yes definitely yes definitely so we will actually discuss more practical examples later on uh, in say, like we, we will also see some dem we will try to see some demos or uh, anything like that so but definitely all the uh, things that we study in like related to vibrations we can always apply them to uh, practical problems so, so the first step yeah so you are working professional and engaged in machine maintenance okay fine okay yeah so uh, so uh, mr room prakash so to answer your question so for any uh, system um, to apply any of the um, like to study the vibration analysis like basically to do uh, do any analysis on this any system so yeah so machine vibration is a very critical aspect so right right so uh, to study any system uh, so we have to first build a mathematical model of that and then uh, try to see what is the response of that system to different uh, inputs so so for that we will have we have to use our engineering judgment many times uh, to what level basically what is the mathematical model that we will use that will depend on the uh, what exactly to the level of detail that we want to go in so uh, that will decide what is the kind of model that we will use so uh, so and uh, so considering like vibration measurement itself so we will place let us say some sensors we will mount uh, sensors at different places let us say in machines or anything like that and we will uh, measure the response of the system at like uh, we will measure let us say displacement or acceleration or like quantities like that uh, so uh, using different sensors and we will try to make uh, some sense out of that we will try to predict uh, let us say if we mount some sensors on the 
let us say if we have a motorcycle or anything like that so we let us say if we mount sensors on fuel tank or the gearbox near the engine uh, on the handle or things in different places and we measure what is like the uh, let us say the accelerations uh, that is experienced at different places so based on that we try to see like the nature of vibration that is experienced at different points will be different so the cause of vibrations will be different so it can be road bumps or even so there will be frequencies corresponding to the uh, speed of rotation of the engine uh, related to the number of teeth uh, that we have in the gearbox the frequency of at which uh, different gears are engaged so things like that so in machines we have lot of moving parts so some parts will be mating with each other at at a certain time interval so there are frequencies associated with that so so yeah all these things are very relevant uh, in practical uh, life so yeah Sure. Anything else? Anyone? Uh, anyone has any other questions? So, if not, we can uh, end up end uh, today's session over here. And uh, so we will meet in the next week. And I hope we will have more. participants in the next week and i will encourage all of you to please participate actively in these live sessions and make the most of it so thank you all for your attention thank you for joining okay good night so we'll see uh, we'll meet next week friday